Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Path of Exile, which I've been playing quite a lot this league, actually. Uh, it is the Harvest League 3.11 going on at the moment, and uh, Harvest has brought us, you know, incredible crafting options, which are going to be getting deleted from the game next league. Uh, hopefully something, uh, something remains from it or, you know, comes into the crafting table so we can craft a little bit easier, especially, you know, for solo self-found uh, people out there. And today, yeah, as you can see, I am playing the solo self-found Harvest Hardcore League here and I am playing my uh, Talent Bleeds character, which is my Bleed uh, Lacerate uh, Gladiator. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be showing you a quick uh, map demo here in the beginning and then, you know, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how this uh, build is so immortal and how you can make any build immortal. So you can definitely finally head into solo self-found hardcore and enjoy playing Path of Exile because I know how hard uh, it hits when you always die, right? Uh, especially, you know, when going deeper into the end game, right? Uh, but anyway, this is my uh, skill tree at the moment here. And as you can see, well, I am pretty high on levels, but I haven't uh, gone too far in maps. Because it is quite a lot of work and uh, I don't play like 24-7. I'm not a live streamer or something like that, right? But I still enjoy quite a lot. And as I'm done, you know, with this character, T9s and uh, even I think a few T T10 maps and uh, I have had no problems, no issues at all uh, with dying, right? Uh, still alive, right? And uh, yeah, gonna show you how this character plays and I must say that at the moment what you're gonna see, my deeps is going to be pretty, pretty sad because as you can see my Lazarette is level 9 and my all other skills are level 5, 6, 7, 8 uh, pretty much pretty low because I just upgraded them to 20% uh, quality and you know just re-leveling them uh, But still the build plays pretty fine because we don't die, right? <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna show you how this build plays and uh, What exactly you know makes a build immortal and how you can you know replicate it, right? Uh, so let's take a Let's take a Basilica map which has a pretty decent uh, boss I guess uh, with uh, multiple phases. I'm gonna put some other stuff. Want to... I'm gonna put it here well, into my old tab here so we can pick something up. But I, I still, I, I think I'm gonna come back here. Uh, sorry for this. Okay, Basilica map, right? Uh, let's uh, let's take a alchemy orb here. So, please, Colonel, we don't have any reflect, right? Okay, so we're good to go. No reflect. And uh, let's take a, an Einar mission here as well. Should be pretty good. I'm gonna summon my uh, stone golem here. So as you can see, quickly looking at the skills, right, what I'm using at the moment here, you can see uh, I am using Val Molten Shell. Almost never use it because <laughs> never need to use it. Uh, but still I have it here, right, just in case. Uh, Lacerate rate and then, you know, manual gas uh, vulnerability. The area is pretty small at the moment because I just, um, you know, quality up my gem, so it's a pretty low level at the moment. The more levels it gets, the you know bigger the area uh, of effect is. Ancestral protector, which is pretty nice uh, with uh, big fat single targets, right? Uh, give us uh, more attack speed uh, when near nearby uh, that rate. Summer stone golem, I just um, you know constantly have to. Uh, re summon it because it dies quite often, but it, it's not a real issue. And as I got a pretty decent enchant uh, from Merciless Lab, uh, I'm happy to use my Stone Column at the moment. And Leaf Slam for Travel, Blood Rage, and Enduring Grey, of course. And uh, you can see I have War Banner, Flesh and Stone, Aspect of the Gut, and Head of Purity. But I'm gonna come to those things in a second. So let's go. And see how my level 5 skills uh, do in tier 5 maps, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's a pretty low level map, right? But still, I shouldn't have any issues. And as you can see, I'm almost never taking any damage at all. Like, it's, it's just so perfect. And, you know, constantly casting vulnerability on some enemies, like this rare, right? Just to get it uh, done a little bit quicker. And as you can see, it's I, I don't have Uber Lab done yet, so I don't have the Bleed Pops. But still, even without Bleed Pops, 
I feel the uh, builds, you know, clear speed is pretty decent. And uh, maybe I should even uh, try and get the chest piece uh, with the uh, explosion, physical explosion rate mod on it. Uh, and maybe for Ascendancy take something else, but it's quite difficult not to take the uh, Bleep Pop Ascendancy. Uh, anyway, uh, let's clear it. Well, you pretty much see how, how it clears, right? Uh, I'm gonna come back here later, right? But I'm gonna go into the boss room, show you how the boss uh, uh, goes, right? And yeah, I mean, th this is pretty much it. Uh, like, you almost never get hit and you just feel immortal. And it's just, it's not a, like a bleed lacerate character thing, right? You can make any build, any skill that you want uh, as tanky as this here, uh, with minimal investments pretty much. Because uh, you can see, I, I haven't abused uh, harvest, uh, like quarry farming or something like that, I've never done that. Uh, just lay it as regular at the moment here, because the league is about to end, like, where is it? I hear it. The league is about to end pretty soon, right? So I just want to see how I'm going to do uh, on league start with this character. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to be starting the league on this character exactly here. Uh, maybe gonna use a brand new skill or something like that, but uh, let's see. I kind of kind of want to do a uh, kind of want to do a um, a uh, well, I, Ice Nova Frostbolt character <coughs> as tanky as this, but like insane damage. All right, so I'm not. I'm gonna tank everything. I'm not really gonna worry about anything. Yeah. Maybe he's gonna do the fire beam as well, so I can show you. I can tank that as well. I mean, this build is crazy tanky, and still we do pretty decent damage rate. I almost never use my light flask, although I have it here. Okay. Yes, you are the soul. Wow. Oh wow. Okay, that was. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not uh, gonna thank it that uh, heavily next time. Uh, did take some damage, but my life is pretty low at the moment for hardcore SSF. Uh, then again, you know, let's pop our wall motor shell. Right? Yep, yep, you're no more. Get, get, get away from this game. <laughs> anyway, that's how the build plays. I uh, hope I, you know, sh got to show you. Uh, and uh, give you an idea how tanky this character is and how tanky you can make pretty much any build. And uh, to do that, first of all, I'm gonna level my gems. If you're wondering why I'm looking here to level my gems and looking there, and I'm using a 65 inch monitor. <laughs> 4K 144 Hz, but at the moment uh, I'm using a 5600 XT, so everything on the lowest setting, and I'm still getting around 80, 90, almost 100 uh, frames per second, and using my 144 Hz screen. So, yeah, I'm waiting for my RTX 3090. Anyway, uh, yeah, into the build and how you can play, uh, how you can make any character this tanky uh, is pretty much as we look at the defenses, right? What do you think uh, sticks out here the most for uh, do you? Can I give you a few seconds? Okay, so the biggest thing, chance to block, attack and spell damage. So almost cap, right? The cap is 75%, uh, you can get it to even 79% uh, with the other ascendancy uh, called um, Violent Retaliation, but it's... Uh, I think it's, oh, it is a maximum chance to block attack, attack damage, yeah, not, you know, some after killing mobs or something like that. Uh, so it is a pretty viable option, uh, but I did try it out and didn't feel it. I didn't feel it was better than this. Uh, I maybe got like six stacks, uh, uh, as you can see, 8% increased physical damage for each time you've blocked in the past 10 seconds. Maybe six times, six stacks of that I could get in most uh, packs. Uh, popping up to like 20 to 30 at most maximum, right? But that process, I, it was just, I mean, it's blood in the eyes is pretty much better, right? And uh, la later on, I'm gonna get the gradatious violence uh, for the bleed pops, right? Uh, there is an option, of course, to take maybe Arena Challenger or maybe even Outmatched and Outlast, but I still think, I mean, it's, it's too good not to take. 
But yeah, what makes this character so tanky is the Ascendancy. And you'd actually, you don't need the Ascendancy, but with Gladiator it is a little bit easier. So we get a little bit of uh, block damage um, if we've uh, taken some damage recently, which is pretty nice, right? Cannot be stunned by hit you block, right? Which is pretty nice as well. And uh, versatile combatant is the main key here. Chance to block spell damage is equal chance to block attack damage. So all you do on your three, right, is gather uh, block nodes uh, that, you know, give block chance uh, via, via by holding a shield or something like that, right? And uh, then just capping attack block chance. You don't need to worry about the spell block at all. This is the this is the uh, best thing about Glad, I guess, uh, when doing a block character. And we are going to be taking resolute techniques, so every we don't need to worry about accuracy at all, because uh, we don't do any critical... Like, critical strikes don't mean anything to us, because we stack bleed, right? We, uh, we can stack eight uh, stacks of bleed into one single target, right? Or onto one single target. And we just, you know, search some bleed nodes and something something like this, right? Bleeding you inflict the damage five percent faster. Now the second thing, if you didn't know this yet, uh, that is really important, is elemental uh, avoidance. So as you can see, chill avoidance, freeze avoidance, shock avoidance, and ignite avoidance is uh, over 100%. So that means we are immune to do these elemental... Uh, uh, elemental... Uh, ailments, right? <laughs> so, uh, why is that so important? Is uh, if we get, we get, when we map, right? We get a lot of ailments put on to us. Uh, we are from uh, back to back, right? Uh, we might get like five different times types of, you know, ailments, and you know, when a mob has a pretty powerful uh, stat in terms of that, you know, maybe doing a lot of cold damage or, you know, fire damage or whatever, right? They can do a lot of freaking damage, right? So getting uh, elemental avoidance over 100% means we're immune to those uh, ailments. So we don't take any extra da uh, more damage from the, those ailments, which is really nice. So we just take the regular damage, right? And maybe some crits, but we block 72% of hits, right? So there's just, at the moment, what to do. 75 is the cap. So there's just a little speed of damage going through. And then, you know, we cap our resistances, even get some maximum resistances here. Uh, as you can see, our, my maximum resistance are pretty high, actually. And uh, also, physical damage reduction is pretty neat. I am missing quite a big chunk here because I'm using an evasion shield at the moment. But I do get, you know, 12% chance to evade attacks. So it's, it's just... It's just pretty freaking neat, uh, even with this shield, right? Uh, why I uh, went with this shield is because I can get recover 4% life uh, when you block, right? which is the best in slot for any shield, with flat life uh, recovered on block. But that's, you know, uh, you need to harvest, uh, craft those things. And I didn't, I didn't want to make this build too over the top, like uh, most people can't play. You know, if you look at forums, right? Uh, forum guys out there looking for builds to play, which is tanky and can do all game, game content. Everybody is using like mirror their gear or close to it. And you're like, but I have like 10 gears. <laughs> so, I mean, of course my gear doesn't cost 10 gears, right? But it's definitely farmable and I'm gonna come to it. But anyway, yeah, you stack a block uh, and you go, go take uh, to to get elemental avoidance over 100%, right, you need uh, a craftable uh, chance to avoid elemental ailments. And this is uh, this is uh, from betrayal. So you need to do betrayals when you whenever you can, uh, or you know abuse some you know mechanics here and there to get uh, more betrayals, so you can get more uh, so you can get more uh, chest armors to be unveiled, right? And then you need to unveil this modification. You need to do it three times and then you can craft it and it costs like four gears no six al alchemy orbs and it has cost me quite a lot because uh, for me i needed to get it over 29 percent i think and uh, many times i rolled below it <laughs> and i've had some other chest pieces this wasn't my first one so yeah it takes quite a lot of alks for me but yeah this is my chest piece that i'm using and i'm getting a lot of ch uh, chance to avoid elemental aimants uh, from this uh, no uh, craft here. The second thing when I, uh, that I did was I went here and took all of these nodes 
And as you can see, I have a lot of chance to avoid, you know, being chilled, frozen. Pretty much chance to, if we take everything, chance to avoid all kinds of elemental ailments. So combining those two things, uh, we pretty much get uh, over 100%. So that's what you need to do, at least early on. Uh, later on, you know, if you get more crafts like for helmet and also you can craft it on boots, then you can remove this and go spec into life or something like that, right? Because I don't need any damage, I don't think. Uh, any, everything that I can, I, I'm gonna put into life nodes and uh, maybe travel from here or travel maybe from here to here and get some life, life nodes. And perhaps uh, I'm gonna even lose this uh, this entire tree, tree uh, part here and go uh, cluster shoes. Uh, that's my end game strat, but cluster shoes are pretty hard to get, so this is why I've done this uh, section here. And as you can see, th these uh, maximum life uh, nodes are, are pretty good by themselves, but if you look closely, chance to avoid elemental ailments. So that's how, uh, again, we cap our uh, avoidance. And when you cap that, you're, re you're gonna be really feeling, gonna be, you're going to be feeling really tanking. Yes, that's that's the, that's the way. Uh, so that's why I went here. Uh, looking at the tree over here, uh, just got this node here, bleeding inflictions. Damage five percent faster. I have uh, this mode on my boots as well here, and also as you can see, I have a chance to avoid being poisoned. Poisoned is uh, not an ailment, so you get poisoned um, here, here and there. Uh, that's why I have immunity to poison on my flask. But this helps quite a lot, in my opinion. 30% uh, to avoid being poisoned is pretty good if you can't get any resistance or any better stat rate. Right? Uh, so that's why I've left it here. And uh, yeah, looking at my flask quickly uh, as well. Uh, basically, we need a bleed immunity flask, poison immunity, and curse immunity. And other stuff, you know, just make what you, whatever you want, right? Uh, I, am, I am using a quartz flask and a granite flask, so uh, I get phasing, touch, uh, chance to torch a spell and attack hits again. I mean, it, it, the build is so freaking tanky with all of these things. Uh, you shouldn't, you know, just spec into one thing, you know. You shouldn't just get 10k life and not spec into any other defenses. You shouldn't just, you know, spec into elemental uh, resistances and then, you know, forget about, you know, something like Chaos Rays at all or something. You know, you, you need to balance everything out and still have damage. That's pretty much what you need to do to stay alive, to stay immortal, right? And, um, yeah, further on, I mean, nothing really special here, right? I guess I can leave my uh, POB link uh, down below here so you can check it out, right? My un anoint at the moment is Sanctuary, gives me a little bit of uh, chance to block attack damage and spell damage, but I am thinking maybe I should get this one here. I don't know. 1% maximum elemental resistances versus 4% uh, block chance. I think this is pretty good as well. Uh, but yeah, two golden oils. Not gonna happen for a while. <laughs> uh, definitely not for me who's not playing like crazy raid. Anyway, that's the passive tree and that's uh, the main things to take into consideration to make any build immortal. So if you wanna play your favorite build, take uh, your first steps into it. SSF hardcore. Keep those things in mind. Anyway, uh, now that I've talked about that, I guess I can show you my own build here that I'm doing. It's a bleed uh, lacerate uh, character, which a lot of people run in solo self found, but you definitely don't need to play uh, lacerate. Uh, definitely you can use absolutely any skill that you want, uh, in my opinion. Uh, just that, you know, it's pretty easy to get, you know, uh, bleeds going, in my opinion. Uh, you don't need to any accuracy thanks to resolute technique, right? And it's just... It's just a nice clear, uh, clear speed skill. But of course, as, as I said, I'm trying to make other builds as uh, well at the moment, and I am thinking about like something like, you know, Frostbolt, Ice Nova, and uh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff to check out uh, in the future. Uh, plus, we never know, you know, what the next league might bring us. Maybe some, some of stuff might be buffed or something like that. Some skills might be buffed. So keep your head open, right? Uh, anyway, uh, looking over my items and uh, skills, right? Let's. Uh, I think I covered the lacerate uh, links, right? Uh, I have lacerate, uh, deadly ailments, melaphysical, fortify, and totality, right? So we get fortify as well, which is 
insane. And for my six linked, I'm gonna be using, um, I guess, rootless. Should be pretty good. And uh, now moving on from there to Herald of Purity, Ancestral Protector, Vulnerability, and Blood Rage. So Herald of Purity, right? Uh, a few mobs, a few allies, right? So I don't get aggroed that much, and I tend to stay alive, in my opinion, more often. Also, although some people might say, you know, you're just gonna get yourself killed uh, because, you know, some of your minions aggro a big hit and you don't know it, it's coming and you go to your minion or something and, you know, absorb the hit or something like that. Might get you killed, but in my opinion, they work out pretty well and also grants us 12% more physical damage, which is pretty nice. Uh, so Ancestral Protector gives us more attack speed when we place it, right, on tougher targets. Uh, manual vulnerability, as I've said, this nothing is you know insane here. Everything is doable, and manual vulnerability is just is so easy, so fast. I don't need to use it for regular trash uh, mobs, right? But anything that stays alive for more than two seconds, I have time to. Okay, let's put vulnerability on you, right? So that's that's the setup, and blood rage, of course, here. Uh, to give us, uh, you know, more, uh, some, you know, leech and stuff like that, right? Uh, and frenzy charges. So, pretty good stuff here, in my opinion. Uh, moving on, Flesh and Stone with Maim and uh, then unlinked here, Ward Banner. Uh, Flesh and Stone with Maim works pretty well because uh, Maim gives, uh, Maim supports Flesh and Stone, so enemies maimed by this skill take 14% increased physical damage. So whenever anything is in our range here, they take more damage, which is pretty nice. And uh, we also only use it in blood stance. We, I never use it in sand stance, but uh, blood stance, and uh, yeah, we just you know do more damage rate. And uh, yeah, maybe you can use um, sand stance if you wish. Uh, nearby enemies are blinded while in sand stance, uh, but I don't feel the need because you know the damage that you lose by going. Uh, let's see, let's see if we actually lose quite a lot. Can we see? 9700, yeah, almost double damage, right? <laughs> so that's why I never use sun stance. Stands. Uh, but you can. Uh, anyway, yeah, war banner as well here. Uh, nearby enemies take 10% increased physical damage, 10% more damage. Why not, right? Now, coming to some other stuff uh, like uh, this setup here, which is pretty nice. So, summer stone golem reckoning with calling strike. In my opinion, pretty neat setup here because uh, uh, perform a swift counter attack uh, against enemies in a cone shape when you block with your shield. We block, well, not as often as we think, right? Uh, but we still block quite a lot, right? We block most of our hits, right? Uh, so we, uh, whenever we block, uh, we put calling strike, right? So, and also our stone golem. So if we fight serious, right? Really hard fight and it's nearing 10% right and every percent matters in at least in hardcore right then you know you you look at your uh, you, you look at serious serious is almost near 10% you look at uh, your buffs oh what stone golem not up stone golem up okay and whenever stone golem goes up to serious and says boink he's dead <laughs> so that's why i love this setup so much here uh, moving on here, I'm ha uh, I have for movement a Leap Slam with faster attacks, regular stuff. Uh, Leap Slam, one of the best uh, movies, movement skills out there. Uh, really love it. And uh, yeah, with faster attacks, it works really good. And second, Wind with Enduring Cry. Enduring Cry, really OP, gives us a ton of like life regeneration for a second. And uh, why we have second Wind here is because we, we don't gain the plus one cooldown use, but we do gain the cooldown reduction or cooldown recovery speed. So we can uh, get that uh, nice little uh, regeneration buff much, much more often, right? Endurance charges, they tend to stay forever pretty much, right? Uh, now, lastly, my cast when damage taken setup is with uh, Wall Molten Shell. Increased duration, so our wall molten shell and regular molten shell uh, stays up uh, much longer. And Tempest Shield, which is pretty nice. Although, uh, I'd really want to get uh, a really low cast when damage taken with Tempest Shield, so I'd have it 
up, you know, more often because we rarely take, you know, this much damage. So when we take a little bit of damage, we get our Tempest Shield up, which grants us 3% uh, uh, bl to block attack and spell damage, which puts us to block cap, which is really nice, right? Uh, but yeah, as we never take uh, any damage really, uh, this thing doesn't really pop off at all at the moment. But anyway, it's here, it's pretty nice and I really love it and I really love the Tempest Shield here. Because whenever we block and this is up, we refresh the duration and the base duration is 12 seconds, so it's gonna be up uh, the entire map long, right? And uh, for the gear, right, uh, as you can see, uh, I don't have my... It's at uh, around 300 and... 50 p dps uh, siege axe here nothing too crazy but still it does have a pretty decent t2 uh, flat physical damage and t4 uh, attack speed right and then i just crafted increased physical damage and of course we have the hybrid as well here so i mean it's a pretty decent axe i don't know how easy it would be get uh, to get in regular league without harvest uh, but still 380 PDPS axe should be doable for anybody if you play long enough, right? And it wasn't really a problem to play with lower axes, so uh, yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, Grant's level 20 aspect of the cat. Now, this was a pretty interesting thing, and I found out that aspect of the cat works really well, in my opinion, in this build. So how you can get stuff like this, uh, Aspect of the Cat can roll on pretty much any gear item, if I'm not mistaken. And what you need to do is get Jorgen uh, from Betrayal into, uh, into Fortification. So whenever you do the Fortification, um, he drops those items, right? Uh, some of those items. At, uh, and one of them was this uh, helmet, and I... I think I harvest uh, re-rolled uh, maximum life and it rolled a pretty good T2 life here. So I left it like this. Uh, it doesn't have any other stats, right? Uh, but I could still um, put the chaos resistance there uh, manually, right? And maybe later I can harvest craft it better, right? But grass level 20 aspect of the cat and aspect of the cat, if we look at it, uh, while active, right? When we reserve the mana, so that's why we can't have any support skills here because it would reserve much more mana, so that's, yeah. I don't put anything into this helmet that's a support skill. Uh, that's how I can, you know, maintain 75 mana, and my stone golem is like 59 mana, so I barely can, you know, cast it, right? Uh, but anyway, what it does is that um, whenever it's active, right, secondary buff lasts 6 seconds, buff lasts 4 seconds. So 6 seconds we have uh, cat's agility, increased attack and cast speed, which is... Okay, I guess. And four seconds, cat stealth, you have increased uh, critical chance and uh, most importantly, 50% reduced visibility to enemies. That's insane, in my opinion. And 15% chance to avoid all damage from hits. Why anybody isn't using uh, cat's, uh, cat's agility, I, I mean, aspect of the cat, I mean, I, no idea. Maybe it's hard to get, right? But it's actually pretty easy to get Jorg in there and, and just, you know, maybe get it on a ring or something like that, right? Don't need it on the helmet. Uh, anyway, that's my helmet here. Other stuff, you know, pretty regular uh, amulet, max life, one to do physical damage, pog, poggers. And some uh, resistances, uh, physical attack damage, uh, leashed as mana. That's pretty uh, neat, actually. Uh, we don't need to rely on our uh, mana flask that much. And some chaos rays as well, right? Uh, my rings, I've uh, cooked up quite a lot of uh, rings because I, you know, tried to harvest craft them better, but yeah, never got anything decent. So pretty crappy rings, as you can see, but still they do the job. And I guess, yeah, I talked a little bit about the shield, right? Uh, yeah, just get uh, recover 4% of life when you block and recover flat life when you block is like the best. Uh, and then, you know, maximum life and everything on top of that is just, you know, uh, it's just uh, icing on the game. Yeah. Uh, so my boots, <clears throat> they look pretty decent, uh, but I guess you don't really need the bleeding you inflict deals damage 10% faster. It is a pretty nice one, but early on, I don't, I don't know. It's pretty okay, I guess, right? And um, chance to avoid being poisoned is pretty nice. Some gold res, max life, yeah, regular stuff. Belt, 
pretty crappy one at the moment here. Nothing much to say here. Uh, gloves, again, messed up many gloves, uh, but this is what I got at the moment here. Nothing too special. And uh, that's that's everything that I got. It's it's nothing. <laughs> so, and I in my jewel sockets, uh, I have just one jewel with increased max life. Uh, best ones would be, you know, get physical damage over time, you know, maximum life, and then maybe something with, you know, please. Uh, Bleeds chance or something like that. Please still do more damage or, or increase damage. Uh, I haven't crafted jewels that much. And I don't have jewels sockets at the moment, except this one. Uh, but this is the build. So, I mean, hopefully I covered enough uh, to help you guys stay alive in SSF, HC and HC in general, or even in Trade League, right? It's really discouraging whenever you do a build, right? Look at look up at someone's build on the forums or on YouTube, right? And you tend to die quite a lot, and you're like, "What am I doing wrong?" Like the damage is there, but it's still the hate dying, right? Then start investing into many things, not just one thing, right? So I mean, block chance definitely is something to cap, and um, if you don't do gladiator, definitely look ways to increase your spell block and attack block at the same time right so maybe like uh, whenever you're going staff right then staff knows there's a lot of uh, nose like this that give you both spell and attack uh, block and uh, yeah there's a lot of other stuff uh, that i've done uh, i'm gonna quickly open up actually my path of building and i have put some notes there whenever I level this build maybe I can you know read something interesting and maybe give you uh, some more tips um, but yeah our uh, leveling this char character right uh, when, I, when I arrive to act 7 uh, when we have to kill the spider boss there right my axe was 120 p dps and uh, it was just op uh, didn't need anything else and i was uh, at 50 percent block chance there with two, 2200 life and i was immortal uh, i felt immortal uh, nothing could absolutely uh, like kill me the e3 was just absolute baseball uh, didn't you know do any damage to me again like 50 percent spell and attack block uh, already in act seven and eight and um, yeah onwards it's just absolutely you know uh, easy uh, one thing to note while leveling try to get your bleed chance to 100 percent as quickly as possible and our ascendancy point uh, as well gives us a little bit of uh, bleed chance but definitely the first ascendancy to go for is the uh, attack and spell block uh, ascendancy and then go for the bleed uh, chance rate and then the bleed pop uh, but anyway some other stuff uh, that you can do, uh, get a glorious vanity jewel, the timeless jewel, which is pretty hard, uh, but it gives you divine flesh, so you can get a divine flesh on your tree, and uh, that way uh, you take a lot less damage actually, but you have to cap your, uh, your chaos rest to 85, I think it was 85, yeah, it's something that I haven't done yet, but I know this is uh, a good strat to go for, so that's something to do in the end game right uh, hunt for this tool uh, some other stuff I've uh, written down here um, yeah you need corrupted uh, blood immunity right for at least for serious uh, fight rate so the way to get that is try to find a jewel that is uh, not higher than I level 39 uh, the corrupt implicit is between I level 33 to 39 and if you corrupt jewels between that, uh, there's the mo best possible outcome to get a corrupted uh, jewel uh, like that. So, you know, try to find jewels at the range of thir level 33 to 39. So a lot you know, easier to get a corrupted jewel, uh, corrupted blood jewel, right? Uh, now, a dark forest map was a pretty interesting one for me. Uh, in dark forest map you gain the craftable of chance to block 3 to 5% on your shield which is pretty nice and I just wrote it down for myself here uh, also you can do level uh, 33 the first lab and uh, hunt for glove enchant 
the best one is Spite, in my opinion. Also, Steel Mage uh, uses this the same exact enchant. And the funny thing was, he farmed it for like four hours when he finally got it. I went into my level 33 lab, and the first one was Spite. <laughs> so that's uh, the best uh, um, club enchant to get, right? Because uh, you, you know, you throw out like a projectile uh, that you know uh, puts chill on enemies which is pretty nice on tougher mobs right helps out a little bit at least right and uh, man there's actually there's a there's too much stuff here that i've written down anyway uh, i'm not gonna make it long i could you know talk here for hours on end uh, that's that's the video i guess i hope you can now become immortal or at least make your gameplay experience a little bit better and hopefully i helped you so yeah, if I helped you, if you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up and uh, come back next week, I guess, when I'm gonna do my next build video or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.